Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about the clip model. And the clip model is a revolutionary model that helps us connect texts and images. So it is going to allow you to sort of search images, it's going to allow you to do a much better job of searching text as well as help you do zero shot classification. We're going to first talk about the major applications of the clip model and then I'm going to talk about the algorithm of like how the clip model is trained and how to use it. So let's talk about clip. Um, the clip model came out from OpenAI about four, three or four years ago. And, and basically, the, uh, what this model does is to train a, um, does do a contrastive pre-training of images and texts together. Let's first talk about its applications. One of its biggest application is an e-commerce search, and it is revolutionizing e-commerce search today um, by allowing it to do sort of vector or embedding based searches. So one classic example here is, you know, here is this search which um, basically is sort of a, a long sort of long tailed search, non Teflon, non stick fry pan. And what previous searches used to do, uh, like previous search algorithms used to do, is they would sort of um, try to match it exactly against the texts in the, uh, for each of the product descriptions, and they would sort of, in, in case of a search like this, they would return very few items. But Clip allows us to do a much better job of AI-based search, and basically what it does is allows us to return much more, uh, a much more relevant set of items, and it does not stop at just looking at the uh, exact matches with the keyword. What it does is an embedding-based search, which I will explain later. Here is a, another example, um, and this example is from, a, um, uh, from an article describing fashion clip, which is an even better sort of iteration of the clip model for fashion images. But as you can see, if you try type blue floral dress, um, the clip model is going to, without any kind of product description, it is going to find images of blue floral dresses, which is uh, revolutionary for searching large e-commerce sort of Shopify stores, for example. Um, how does it do it? It, as I was saying, it does an embedding search. So we are converting each of these images and each of these words into these large embeddings, which are you know vectors of size maybe 768 or 256. And here you can see sort of a two-dimensional representation of these embeddings. So as you can see, the fashion clip, which is the better model, um, if you look at skirts, all these skirts are embedded very close to each other. And when you search for an embedding of, of like skirt, for example, um, the embedding of the word skirt will be very close to this sort of cluster where all the images of skirts are located. And then if we say, you know, find the closest 10 embeddings, that would return the 10 most relevant items. Um, but hopefully you already knew about vector search, but that was a small primer on vector search. So this is what Clip allows us to do. The second thing that it allows us to do is to do what we call zero shots classification. So for example, we're given this image of a dog and we want, we have this, you know, 10, probably 10 or more uh, classes and we want to do a zero shot classification. We haven't trained any model, or, or we, we have a pre-trained model, but we haven't seen any sort of data from this particular um, training test set. Um, so basically what we do is we pass a bunch of texts, um, each of these texts say photo of a plane, photo of a car, photo of a dog, and so on. And in the embedding space here, we see that you know, this, uh, this picture, the embedding of this image is closest to the embedding of the word photo of a photo of a dog. And then we basically compare the, all the embeddings and say, you know, how close are each of these embeddings to the texts. And the photo of a dog sort of wins. And this is basically the idea of zero shot classification. So hopefully I have convinced you that the clip model is a very important model which is revolutionizing both um, e-commerce based searches is also, 
as well as in zero shot classification. Um, so now let's talk about how the clip model is trained. Um, as I was saying, the, this, is the, so this is the main image in both the clip paper as well as the, uh, so this is the paper which describes the clip or introduces the clip model and this is from uh, OpenAI. Um, and this is sort of the main image in this paper, which is also the image in this blog from OpenAI. Um, the blog image is probably a little bit clearer, so let's explain that. <clears throat> so how do we train this model? We pass in n different um, uh, texts and the corresponding set of images. So the we can see the first one here. Um, there is an image here of a dog and the corresponding sort of label for the image or the caption of the image, it says Pepper the Aussie Pup, right? And then there are n minus one other images behind this and n minus one corresponding sort of um, captions of the images that we pass. Now we have a text encoder. And the, what this encoder does is that it takes each of these texts and converts that into an embedding. So T1, T2 to Tn, each of these are sort of vectors of size 256 or 768 or whatnot, dimension, so each of them is an embedding. And now here, this, the images are also embedded into the same sort of embedding space. So they have the same dimensions as the text embeddings. And the text encoder is, you can use any text encoder you want, but probably an attention-based model similar to ChatGPT, which sort of produces an embedding of uh, this text. And then the image encoder is a powerful sort of uh, image classification model, like uh, one of the ResNets model, models which encodes the image. And now we end up with this n by n matrix, where each element in the matrix is a dot product of an image embedding and a um, corresponding text embedding. What we want is to maximize these values of these embeddings in these blue, uh, denoted by these, in the diagonals denoted by this blue color. So we want I1 and T1 to be very close to each other, and we want I1, T2, I1, T3, and so on to be far away from each other. So their dot product should be small, but I1, T1 should be large. So we want the diagonals to have large dot products, and we want the um, non-diagonal elements to have small dot products. That is what we want in our training, and we set up the loss function accordingly. Let's now, go to the paper to see exactly how the algorithm runs. Um, this is what the figure one of the paper, which we, which we already looked at. And now we go to the description of the, the, the pseudo code for the implementation of the algorithm, which is in figure three of the paper. So what happens in this pseudo code? Um, here we see that first we have an image and we take an image, so we take sort of n images and then we use an image encoder to encode it to a dimensionality of di. We have a corresponding text encoder which encodes it to a different dimensionality dt for each of these n sort of corresponding captions or labels. And then we have this matrices wi and wt which we learn during our training um, and by sort of multiplying these embeddings with these matrices, we bring it to a common embedding space which has a dimension of DE. So when we take the IF, um, which has a dimension of DI, and multiply it with this WI, we, we come up with a um, matrix DIE, which has a dimension of N and DE. Um, and you can see that the WI and the WT are, um, the sizes of these matrices all have sort of DE as the number of columns so that we can sort of project both of these matrices to the joint embedding space. Then what we do is do an L2 normalization. We normalize these embeddings because, you know, um, deep learning models like sort of um, uh, normalized sort of vectors which, which are sort of often much, much better for um, 
the gradient sort of um, uh, flow. Uh, in any case, we, we then, so, so we, we end up with these normalized vectors, um, IE and TE, which all have the dimension of DE. So now we do this logit, and we end up with this n by n matrix. Remember this n by n matrix? So this is the our n by n matrix of um, n by n matrix of dot products. Um, and then we multiply it by a temperature vector to sort of um, help with training. And so we end up with these logits. And then we define two losses, and this is something to understand. So we have an image-based loss and a text-based loss. What are these losses? Uh, let's write down the losses more explicitly. So remember, we have this n by n matrix. So n square values, we want the n values to be large, and we want the other n square minus n values to be small. Um, for each row, we want the diagonal value to be large. And for each column, we want the diagonal value to be large. And so let's look at the image to text loss. Okay. So for each image i, um, so for each row, basically here is, so we do this for each row and we sort of sum up the values in each row. So for each row, we want the diagonal element i i to have a large value and then these other elements to have a small value. So that is what is going to make the loss small in this, um, in this case. So this loss is a loss from image to text. So basically what this loss is saying is that um, we are going to make the text encodings for each image given an image. So each row is an image. And so for each image, we are going to make the text encodings of the texts which are not corresponding to the image sort of far further away from the image. So that is the image to text loss, and that is what is defined here, okay? And then there is a corresponding text to image loss. So for every text, which is each column, so each text is each column, we, we now want to have a loss that makes only the corresponding image embedding dot product large and the other dot product small. So for each column now, we have this loss. So we took a loss for each row, we took a loss for each column, and then we add up these losses. Um, and this is what loss i is the loss for each row, loss t is the loss for each column, and then we'll add them up and we get the total loss. And that is the basic idea of how the clip model is trained. And once it is trained, the idea here is that we will have all of these embeddings of each of these images and texts with uh, corresponding texts very close together. And if we now go back at you know, the image that we were looking, once we are successful, we're going to train these models. Fashion Clip is a model that is even better than Clip for fashion images only. Once we're successful, if we give an, um, if we give a search for skirts, that will, that will be very close in the embedding space to all the images of the skirts. So that allows us to make searches such as, you know, if I search for blue floral dress, for example, what that allows us is that we find images, image embeddings, which are very close to the blue floral dress sort of text embedding, and we immediately retrieve those images. Hope I was able to explain to you how the clip model works in order to do image retrieval. If, if there is any confusion, you can also comment and I will do my best to explain more about the clip model. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed the video.